This is how electrical engineers draw power and ground on a schematic. Let's say it's a printed circuit board and you have a battery that's like literally soldered to the board. Well, you're gonna give it a digital ground and you're going to give it a rail. And this rail is gonna use a little arrow. Let's say this is VBAT. This is where there's a little bit of style that comes in. Let's say that you wanna run this over to a linear regulator which is also connected to ground, and you want to explicitly show that with a wire on the schematic. That's okay. And then what you can do is you can have a capacitor here that also goes to ground. Maybe that's like 0.1 microfarad bypass type of thing. Come out here and you have like an output capacitor, which would be like, let's say that also goes to ground. 10 microfarads, and maybe come over here and bypass him too with a 0.1 microfarad cap. This is like a 3.3 volt regulator right here. What you're going to do is you're going to show that VBAT who goes into there is going to turn into your voltage rail, which is nice and cleanly regulated at, let's say, 3.3 volts. Now, if I want to use that 3.3 volt rail elsewhere in the schematic, all that I have to do is give a little arrow here, say 3.3 volts, and then put it into something. Maybe this is going into another part that's also referenced to ground, and maybe this is like a microcontroller, like, you know, ESP32, something like that. That's all you have to do. What you don't do is what you see in school a lot, which would be like, running all of these grounds into some sort of Kirchhoff loop like this sort of thing um we just we, we don't we don't do that I guess this guy here wouldn't even be that way he would be like this we just don't do that in practice and yes you could calculate the voltage loops or the current loops or whatever voltage loops I guess all that stuff um it's been a while since school but we just don't draw schematics that way in practice. This is totally fine for school, so don't go telling your professors I told you how I draw it my way in industry, but just stick with that if you're in school. Otherwise, draw it the way I showed you. Before the comments get out of hand, I want to show you another little style thing real quick. It's probably 50-50 on whether I would draw it this way. I guess if the battery was literally soldered to the board with tabs, I probably would. Like, to keep this abstractly one little area on my schematic that sort of physically represents reality, I might keep it this way. But the other way to do it is you would split it here and what you would do is you would show VBAT coming in here, VBAT. So see, that kind of like splits it so that there, there is a divide here. You don't have a wire crisscrossing here. So you could put this on one page of your schematic and this on another page of your schematic. And you might even have like a little connector here. Does one of these things where this goes to ground. And this, this guy over here might have his own little connector too. Like if you're using a battery with a connector, so that's how it pretty much works in practice is you don't have wires running all over your schematic. You try to keep them in little abstractions.